in your 2013 game against Aronian at Tata, when you played Bishop C5, 15 for black, Bishop C5, all the ensuing combinations and tactics, how much of that were you seeing in advance? So that's literally this position, yes, right? Yes, and you played And I played Bishop, Bishop C5. C5. So I'll tell you, I spent 25 minutes in this position because I couldn't remember a thing. I, I vaguely remembered that, uh, sorry, I'll move the pieces sure, a bit. Yeah, sure. uh, that if he goes H3, then this is the draw. I right. have to and that's the, what he should do, right? And that's a draw. And bishop e4 then? Uh, that is some draw. I think you take and bishop b8 and then yeah. this knight is loose. And the details are a uh, thing. But when he played f4, I thought, this move I don't remember at all. And I, I was um, searching, racking my brain to find out why. And I could not figure it out. Then suddenly, I had this uh, almost a, something flashed in my head. And this knight was on this square, on d3. In your head? In my head. I suddenly, some variation flashed where I had a knight on d3. I couldn't for the life of me connect it, but I started to look, is there something? The, there are obvious moves anyway. I can do this, trying to get to d3. Right. I can play e5, all based on the same idea as in the game. But none of them seem to work. This one is too slow. He takes and these things. This one, I mean, he'll allow me to take and recapture it. So what's the deal? Eventually, by uh, elimination, I realized it must be bishop c5, there's nothing else. But once I started to look at bishop c5, it started to look good to me, and then, then it closes very fast. It's like find, if I'm, um, finding out 80% of the map, then the rest fills in very fast. It gets accelerated. And you knew knight d e5 was coming at that point. That was the thing. So uh, I'll tell you this. I played bishop c5 because if, I, if he takes, I take, he captures here. Then my dream, my vision, whatever, is check and knight captures d3. And yeah. then that knight, which pops into d3, yes. works. So um, that's all I had to reconstruct. But it is beautiful that with very little, I was able to reconstruct it. Now, I went here. Aronian was a bit shocked because he had not given it a lot of attention. But it was very courageous on him, his part, to even get here because I had prepared this for a match against Gelfand. And the guy lets me, uh, and basically says, show me what you got. Yeah. Show me what you and your team spent a month on. Yeah. Uh, that's, it's brave, but it's also kind of irresponsible. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, unless you've checked it yourself uh, very thoroughly. So he yeah. seems to be slightly flippant about it. Anyway, um, after bishop e2, the rest played itself. For me, bishop c5 took 25 minutes. I don't remember, yeah. 95 might have taken me five minutes, but more because I was double checking rather yeah. than anything. But this came effortlessly. Because already we are talking of this knight has to support this one. Um, the queen and bishop are going to flood into d4. Um, knight f2 check is going to win. All these little dots. So while this is maybe the most spectacular move, yes. it's the less difficult move to find, especially once you have done this. Yes. So now if you ask me, before I saw bishop c5, did I see knight d5? Right. I did not even see bishop e2. I was more focused on the main right. thing. I didn't see bishop e2. So... Once he played bishop e2, the obvious, everything else <laughs> filled itself and uh, I flooded in. And of course, uh, the big advantage was by now, um, Rottlevi Rubinstein was coming into my head. <laughs> so I knew that, um, I knew what happens, when, well, we'll get the structure a bit later, but I knew what happens when you get this bishop, this bishop, all pointing in this direction. Smothered mate, h3 becomes yeah, so impossible. This was, uh, roughly speaking, this was Rottlevi Rubinstein with a knight here. And... Um, um, it's a classic game in chess yeah. history. And so I knew the patterns and, and all, all the details check out. So once I played knight d5, the rest came pretty fast. There was only one more thing I had to find. King h1, knight takes g4. Again, every move loses except what he did. And then f5 is a brilliant move. f5 is fantastic because for a dangerously long time, and later on you shiver when you, you shudder when you realize <laughs> what you could have done, for a lo quite some time, I considered this move. Yeah, but then queen h7, and Correct. it's a draw, right? Or maybe you're maybe even worse? Maybe even I'm worse. Yeah. But the beauty <clears> is, uh, it was this move was slightly easier to find, because seven years ago, Kramnik had allowed uh, queen h7 against Fritz, mate. <laughs> and Kramnik and Kramnik, pretty much everyone said, there is no way I would have allowed queen h7 if the knight had been on f6. Right. Because to a human, immediately it signals danger all over the place. But a knight on f8, you almost forget it's there. Uh, whereas for a computer, it sees that both moves allow queen at 7. So at some point, I realized, oh my god, queen at 7. Well, that would spoil a very nice position. Then by elimination, again, I could play f5. 
And once again, all the dots come. And the queen so, will come to h4. Yes. And one way or another, it will be over. It's and over. then you just knew you're completely winning. And there's one more detail, if you like, which is that here, I have to play this. Yeah. But it's, it, it wins. It's the only move which doesn't lose, but, it's the, but it also <laughs> wins. So.